So we're, we're moving now in the world of Bechir to another commentary. And this is the Or HaChayim, who was Rav Chaim Ibn Atar, who was born in 1696 and passed away in 1743, a rather young life, only 46 years old. He was the chief rabbi of Morocco, and eventually in the, towards the end of his life, the latter years, he came to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, and that's where he is buried on the Har Azesim, on the Mount of Olives. Now, the Orachim HaKadosh, as he is known, he is, uh, I would say, understandably and famously known as one, of the, uh, as one of the main commentators that we have on the Chumash, on the Five Books of Moses. His commentary is legendary. He was a Kabbalist, so it's extremely deep, and there are a lot of mystical ideas that are there. So we can understand that the Orachim would want to uh, expound upon the idea of Bechira, free will. And he uses as his, as the uh, launching point for his discussion, at the very end of Parsha Bracious, this is after Hashem has created an, an entire universe, which he looked back and he said, it's toiv ma'id, it's very good. He was very pleased with his creation. He saw everything worked in, fit in together perfectly. And at the end of the day, V'yar Hashem, at the end of the day, the world took a turn for the worse. V'yar Hashem ki rabba ra sa'adam ba'aretz Hashem saw that the wicked acts of man were very bad, or were very bad on the earth. And at that time, what did he do? V'kol yeitzah ma'achshav azlibo irak ra kol ayom, all of the thoughts of man were wicked all day long. He regretted that he made man on this earth, and he was like saddened in his heart. And Hashem said, Hashem said, I'm going to wipe out the man that I created, from the face of the earth, from man to animal, creepy crawly thing to birds in the sky, uh, I regret that I made man. However, now this is a famous question that comes up in the parsha. There is that Hashem, you know everything. You know what's going to be with the world before the world even was started. You know all of the decisions of mankind. You, nothing is, nothing is uh, hidden from you. Nothing is concealed from you. So if you knew you're going to create a man, and that man is going to become the biggest sinner in the world, and he's going to destroy himself and destroy the world around with him, why suddenly are you showing that you regret that you created a man, you're sad you created a man, now you have to destroy everybody? You knew what's going to happen already. Because if you say that you wouldn't know what's going to happen, so then you're not an all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty God. So what exactly says the, says the, says the, 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 the great Mephorsh and the great commentators and Rashi amongst them is there, what exactly is this Chiddush, this, this new idea to Hashem? He had no idea the world's going to go turn so terrible. He had no idea that everybody's going to become the evil. He had no idea he's going to have to destroy the world. Why suddenly? What, it's like a surprise to Hashem. Oi, I had no idea, and now I regret that I created. But Hashem, you knew what you were creating. You knew what's going to be. So the Orachim HaKadosh uses these words of, he uses these words of the Torah to be able to explain over here the idea and the concept of Bechira, of man's free will, and at the same time, Yediyah, that Hashem has foreknowledge, and He's well aware of everything. And the Orachim goes back in time, or he goes back in, in time, the Rambam came much before him, and he explains that once you have the Rambam, all of this begins to make sense. Now remember, the Rambam said that after he goes through his entire thesis of how Bechir is going to work, he says there is a, there is a paradox, and the paradox is that Hashem does know everything, Nevertheless, even though he knows everything, it does not limit the fact that you have Bechir, you have free will. I, he knows everything, so he knows already what you're going to do. He's decreeing what you're going to do. So how's that going to work? The Rambam says, you cannot understand. The human mind cannot grasp the profundities of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and therefore, 
just as you don't understand how he's running the entire universe, how his hashkach, his, his uh, jurisdiction is running over everything, how could you expect yourself to understand that he knows everything and yet you have bechir, you have free will? And therefore it's not a steer, it's not a contradiction. Now, the, the, the Archaim writes, based on these words of the Rambam, that, that if, you, if you understand what the Rambam is saying, you'll be able to understand why it is that Hashem suddenly he regrets man's actions. Regretting sounds like it's something that's new to Hashem. Like you didn't know that they're going to destroy themselves. You didn't realize that man's going to take this gift of Bechira and, and make a mockery out of it and end up destroying himself and the world around him. Regret is, ah, I have regret what I did. I, I didn't know it's going to be like that. I mean, I, I, for example, I, I go to the restaurant, and this is a small scale. I go to the restaurant, and I see the menu in front of me, and really, in my mind, I want to order, I want to order the hamburger. But there's something that catches my over here, some strange name thing and has a, a neat description as to it. And really in my mind I'm thinking, maybe I shouldn't do it. Ah, why not? What's, what's the, I'm here anyway. And I order it, and then it turns out to be horrible. So I have charata, I regret that I ordered that. I should have ordered the hamburger. I tried to be fancy, I ordered the thing that I have no idea what I'm even eating right now. I regret that I ordered it. Hashem, you regret that you created mankind? You knew exactly what you're ordering. You knew exactly what you're making. You knew exactly what's going to happen. How do you have regret? Says the Rechaim, what's the problem? The Rambam already explained it to us. And he says like this, that, that the, according to the Rambam, humans cannot understand the nature of Hashem's divine knowledge, of His Yediyah, of His foreknowledge. And remember there was a comedy called the Ravid who argues on the Rambam, and he says to the Rambam, if you're going to ask a question of how could it be that Hashem knows everything and yet we still have free will, so then you have to answer the question. And he, he, uh, he, he tells the Rambam, he says to the Rambam, you didn't answer the question, so you never should have asked the question before. So he comes up with an idea which is like that Hashem's kind of like an astrologer, just like an astrologer doesn't really know what's going to be exactly in the future, how it's going to get there but he's able to see into the future. So Hashem's foreknowledge is astrological. So I'll just read you the words of the Orachim, because he's very sharp with the Raivin. He says, Haraivin Hashem yechaper be'ada. Hashem should forgive him for his injustice over here. Noag miud kavah be'rabam. He spoke so unpleasingly, with such a lack of honor to the Rambam. Al devara bezev ha'alekol ki toiv leima shera osa yizbar cheroiz Astrologer, he what he thinks that if you if you say that Hashem is like an astrologer, that's a better way to answer the question. No, it's not true. At rather, Divya Rabbam Iker. The words of the Rabbam are the real. It's the main idea of how how Bechira works. Ki ein oifin yedias Hashem musegis as any. We can't understand the way that Hashem runs the world. Umiyid mila Hashem lekachas yedili is damel in love. Who could actually think? that they could understand it, or they could be madama, they could liken their understanding of the world to Hashem's. You can't. And therefore, the I want to explain to you, says the Orachim HaKadosh, Ki Hashem Yocha Lishla Yediyah Museges Bi Hashem is able to like close off and remove His understanding Lebal Yedanu Keshayit Sa'odayin in a way that only Hashem could understand what that means. We cannot understand exactly what that means that Hashem is doing such a thing. And that's what he writes over here. That's the way that Rabbi Tatz will explain the words of the, of the Orachim. And he says, it's inappropriate to say that Hashem's knowledge resembles human knowledge. And he says the Rambam's approach is correct. <clears throat> and he interprets the Rambam to mean, what Hashem is with, when Hashem withholds his knowledge of the future to allow for free will, and he says, this is the aspect of divine knowledge that humans cannot understand. Meaning, what does it mean that we can't understand the divine knowledge of Hashem? What it means is the fact that HaKadosh Baruch can withhold his knowledge from knowing what is going to be, that we cannot understand. Humans cannot conceive 
the willful exclusion of the knowledge of a reality that is apparent to Hashem. Meaning, that's the way that HaKadosh Baruch has set up the world. That's the way that He runs things. Now, you want to go back into the words of the Ariza like we had before. It means that in that world, outside of the physical world that we live in, of course HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows everything, every little detail, no question about it. That's Hashem's world. But in the physical world that Hashem created down here, this world of humanity, of life, of decisions, of choices, of incidents, of situations, of struggles, of challenges that we're going to be in, in this world it's like Hashem precluded His ultimate knowledge in order to allow the world to function the way that it needs to function. So in this world, it's like HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not know, so to speak, what we're going to do. And that allows, it facilitates for a person that they should have what's called Bechir, free will. But in that upper realm, Hashem knows everything. So the fact, says the Orachim over here, that the Rambam, back to the Rambam, is explaining that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is able to do with His knowledge whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to do. Now we cannot understand that because in our mind, knowledge does not work like that. What we know, we know. What we see, we see. What we don't know, what we don't see, we don't know. We could learn about it, we could hear about it. But we, whatever we're not aware of, we're not aware of. HaKadosh Baruch is able to limit, again, Hashem can choose to do it how He wants. He's able to limit that knowledge in order to facilitate us having free will. Says the Orachim, that's what the Rambam means when he says we cannot, we can simply not understand or fathom HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the way that he runs the world. And therefore he says, I'll bring you a proof to this. I'll bring you a proof from the Torah itself that there are things that Hashem chooses not to know and not to see. And he quotes a verse that comes much later on in the Torah, in part in Ba Midbar. And the Torah says that when there was the wicked, um, when there was the wicked uh, prophet of the non-Jewish world, Bilam, and he wanted to curse the Jewish people, <clears throat> every time he opened his mouth, a blessing would end up coming out. One of the things he said is, Lahibit Ovin B'Yakov. He does not see iniquity, Hashem does not see iniquity, sin, amongst Yaakov, the Jewish people. Valayra Amal, he does not see their sinful ways or their, their hard work in sin, he doesn't see. What, how does he not see? The Jewish people look around the world today, you don't have to look very far, we, can look, we don't even have to look past our nose, and we will see that we are doing sins and we're doing the wrong thing. So what does it mean that HaKadosh... And, and remember, Hashem is talking about over here, in the wilderness, when the Jewish people are complainers and kfetchers and sinners and denying Hashem and lacking a moon and all, he, it's, it's right in front of his face. So what does it mean? Lahibit of and Yaakov, Hashem doesn't see the sin of, amongst the Jewish people. So in Eroya, says the Orachim, you see, Keshiyirza Hashem Shalolidas, when Hashem does not want to know what's going on, Yushlal Hayidiya, he removes his knowledge, so he should not see what's going on. It's like a parent when their kids are like beating each other up in the other room. You hear crying and screaming, but the parent like kind of walks, I don't want to know what's going on over there. The kids are working out themselves. I don't want to know. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he doesn't want to see the sins of the Jewish people. He doesn't want to see all of their mistakes. He doesn't want to see all of their problems. He doesn't want to see all their stumblings and their fallings. Hashem doesn't want to see that. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu is allowed to, to interface and behave towards Klal Yisrael any way that He wants to. And therefore, what do you see? And this is the way, again, I'll just explain it through Rabbi Tatz's words over here, that there are things that Hashem chooses not to see. He can hide a manifest reality from himself if he wishes. If Hashem wants to, he can do it. What's the problem? Hashem can do anything he wants. He's all-powerful. So part of the all-powerfulness is, I can choose to run the world any way that I want to, and I can choose to limit or conceal my vision when it's necessary for me to do. 
Because when I do that, it allows you to have free will. So that means if you sin, you have chosen to sin. I didn't tell you to sin, says I go to Baruch Hu. If you do a mitzvah, you chose to do a mitzvah, and you deserve the great reward. I didn't tell you to do the mitzvah. I commanded you. I've encouraged you in my Torah. I maybe set things up in a way that makes it so much easier to do the mitzvah. However, I didn't push you into it. I didn't, I didn't force you to do it. You have done that on your own. And since that you've done that on your own, you deserve great reward for the mitzvahs that you have done. Humans could conceivably choose ignorance because a person and his knowledge are separate at some level. But how, so meaning I could be ignorant to what's going on around me. That's called ignorance. Because you don't know. You just simply don't know. You can't know everything. But Hashem is not like that. The separation of domains does not apply to Hashem. And therefore, this must be the aspect of divine knowledge, which means that Hashem limits His seeing. He limits what He's aware of. That, and that's the thing that humans themselves cannot understand. So the Orachayim HaKadosh is bringing this Again, I, I wouldn't even call it revolutionary at this time because he's basing himself off so much of what we learned already based on the words of the Rambam. I believe that he's using ideas also of the, of the Arizal, which would make a lot of sense because the Orachayim was a Kabbalist himself. So we'd be using words of the Arizal also, the ideas of the Arizal. And that is that I, you can't understand how Hashem in His infinite wisdom an all-knowing and all-powerful being what wanted to conceal certain things that a person does in this world, well, that's the way that Bechir is going to work. You can only have Bechir if Hashem does that. So since that Hashem wants you to have Bechir, He wants you to have free will, He wants you to make decisions on your own, He has to do such a thing. But that itself is an expression of our Kodesh Baruch Hu's might and omniscience and omnipotence. And therefore, says the Rechaim, what's the problem? There's no problem over here. It's not such a paradox. It's not, such, it's not so perplexing. It all makes very good sense when you, again, you use the Rambam as the basis, as the foundation, as a starting point. You insert some of the concepts, Kabbalistic concepts of the Arizal in there as well. It all works out perfectly, says the Rechaim. Okay, we didn't finish the words of the Rechaim. There's more to see. I'll just let you digest that and think about that until next Monday, Be'ez Hashem. And uh, again, as we go through life and you begin to look around and you see where there's opportunities for you to exercise your free will, you'll realize that I'm, I have free will because HaKadosh Baruch, He's allowing me, because that He's holding Himself back to see exactly what I'm going to do, He's allowing me to be able to exercise my modicum of Bechir, of free will in my life, because in that way, if I do the right thing, I deserve the greatest of rewards. If Khalilah, God forbid, I do the wrong thing, there will be consequences, but Hashem trusts us that we're going to utilize this gift of free will for the right things, Be'ez Hashem. Okay, stay dry. Have a wonderful day, everyone. A Wednesday, like I said, there's no class, and on Thursday, on next Monday, Emir Hashem, We'll pick up again. All the best.